This is Shooting Spaces with Rich Baum and Brian Berkowitz. Welcome to Shooting Spaces, a real estate photography podcast. This is Rich Baum from beautiful, smoky, hot California. And Brian Berkowitz here <laughs> from New York. Smoky is the key word. It's, it's bad out there, huh? It's really bad. It, I'm not personally affected other than the sky. Uh, my shooting has been affected because it's, it's like yesterday, I'm up in the foothills uh, on the way to Tahoe and I'm shooting a huge house and it's like nighttime um, at two in the afternoon. Um, and it, but it is so far beyond what we had two years ago at Paradise. It is like a paradise is the city that got completely destroyed, the famous city. And it's like we have multiple paradises this year. So it's, uh, it's unbelievable. Ash on our car every day. Uh, yesterday we had 40 mile an hour winds. My son up in Salt Lake City said they had 112 mile an hour winds in Salt Lake City yesterday. That's crazy. Constant. City's out of power. World is, it's crazy. It's crazy, man. I keep forgetting <laughs> How about your, you? <laughs> I keep forgetting your son's in Salt Lake City because my brother lives there now. So uh -huh. we, have to, we have to schedule a, a little meetup over there one day. Love it. Love it. We could do a whole, everybody, come on out. We'll go to, we'll get a, to, go to Salt Lake City and party. We'll have a good time. So what's yeah. up with you, Mr. Uh, travel, travel, travel? All is good. I'm home now doing mm -hmm. some shoots, uh, shoots back home while I'm here. Shooting one of my biggest properties ever tomorrow. How big? 47 acre property, 20,000 square feet, listed at 25 million. Just a little shack on the on Yeah, the point. exactly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, comes with a helipad, waterfront property, the whole deal. So if anybody's interested, just shoot me a message. I'll introduce you to the broker. I shot a 40 acre uh, acre place on uh, last Thursday, but it didn't have the heliport and it was not quite, uh, it was only a couple of million. No but, helipad, uh, that's amateur no stuff. Heli Helicord. What did I say? Helicord? Anyway. Helicord. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, it was, uh, it was great, though. I had a great time. And again, we are just dealing with, uh, I should do a, a whole tutorial on shooting with smoke. It's a whole, it's unbelievable. I mean, my, um, my aperture and my, um, uh, my, ap my well, I'm sorry, my aperture and my um, shutter speed was like wide open at night. I, I, unbelievable. I was shooting my ambient shot was two to three seconds. And my flash shot was a tenth of a second or 15th with flash. Unbelievable. So anyway, so listen, I want to start off by just bringing in my read. And I want to say a fast way to add revenue to your business is 360 virtual tours, which I'm a big, we're both big virtual tour guys now. So we're digging it. And you can do these virtual tours with cloudpano.com. It's what I use and I think it's what you use. Get started today for only $1.00. Try out Cloud Pano Pro Plus, add revenue to your business, and can do, continue doing what you love. Visit shootingspaces.net slash forward slash Cloud Pano and start today your $1 trial on Cloud Pano Pro Plus. Do it today. Okay. Awesome. So we have a lot to talk about today. So let's get right into it. Awesome. We have a super, super great, uh, something that's, Dear to our heart, and you want to you want to break it? Who we're doing? It? Yeah. yeah so know you know everybody knows Brandon Cooper, who's uh, mm -hmm. the uh, the guru behind PFRE. Um, thanks for coming on, Brandon, with us. Yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. Um, and we wanted to bring you on as uh, we close out this season because we're right around the corner for I guess we can call it PFRE 2.0 or 2020 or I guess that's the same thing, 2.0, 2020. Um, but um, yeah, so we're right around the corner and we're, we're getting ready to go all virtual this year. Is that correct? We are, yeah. It's, <clears throat> you know, it's one of those things, a uh, little bit of a bummer that we're not able to get back to Vegas and hook up again like we did last year. We had such an amazing time and it was so fun to get everybody in person. I still remember, actually, I was just talking about it the other day when I saw the video of you and rich meeting in person for the first time in the in the casino and, and that was only one of many uh, <clears throat> meetings similar to that so we yeah. you know we were excited to sort of uh, build on the momentum from last year and, and get right back to vegas and, and go from there but 
as we all know, the world has changed, things are challenging. And it just, I mean, it's just not reasonable to get back in person this year. So we decided we didn't want to uh, take a year off. We wanted to just take a different approach, pivot a little bit. Um, there's definitely some pros and cons of going online, but at least this way we can get everybody together again and, and then keep the momentum going so that as soon as it's safe to do so, we can get back in person. And I want to break in and say, if you're if you're expecting to see Brandon, if you're watching this feed live uh, or uh, recording um, at, with a visual on a computer, uh, Brandon does not is unable to join us uh, visually, but we can hear him. So don't worry, it's not you, it's it's us. So. It's actually me because my my doesn't get very good internet. So I was the, trying the to video. I was trying to cover you, buddy. Come on, <laughs> your fourteen four modem that. is not quick enough, huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Great. Now this will this will suffice because I what Brian, uh, Brian, how many? What percentage of people watch? Not a not as many as a we lot more hope. listen than watch, but we yeah. do get we do get a nice chunk of views on YouTube. So yeah. Um, okay. Cool. So let's let's start off first things first, Brandon. Why don't for people that don't know, I think you announced them already. But what are the dates of the virtual conference that we got coming up? Yeah. So I'm a little hesitant to say a hundred percent, but it, we're shooting for November twentieth, twenty first, which is a Friday, Saturday. The only thing that would change is maybe a Thursday, Friday, the nineteenth and twentieth. But we'll we'll get those dates out as soon as possible. Um, just trying to work through some other logistics before we finalize, finalize those 100. percent Cool. And there, I mean, there's definitely something positive about doing it on a Saturday. I mean, yeah, people might get stuck home on a Saturday on our computer all day, but nevertheless, they're not turning down two days worth of work if they want to watch this stuff live. That's exactly our sort of approach. Um, it's a little bit, you know, that was the way we, we approached things in Vegas last year because we didn't want to pull people out of their market for too long because, again, for all of us self-employed folks, every day out of the market costs us money, right? The difference this year, though, with a lot of folks who have, you know, kids at home and they're doing the, uh, you know, a lot of kids, like for myself, my kids literally just went back to school two days ago. So I would probably be better off having like a Thursday, Friday thing but then I talk to a lot of other people that would much prefer a Friday, Saturday thing. So we're kind of, it's kind of 50, 50. We've tried to reach out and see what would be best for people, but ultimately we're going to have to just make a choice. And if I had to, if I had to make a call right this moment, realistically, I'm thinking 20th, 21st, which is the, the Friday, Saturday. Cool stuff. And this is going to be, as you, we mentioned, completely virtual. So these will be just live classes or conferences or webinars, whatever you want to officially call them online. People just go to their computer, whatever the link is, and just watch someone teach basically as if you would be, you know, in person at a seminar. Yeah, pretty much. That I mean, so the, the, there's a couple things to it. Number one, like you said, as much of a, as a bummer as it is that we're not able to get together and have fun in Vegas and have a party and all that kind of stuff. One of the sort of restrictions that we had last year, and we knew very well going into it that this was going to be a concern was we were very limited when it came to technical uh, instruction. You know, we had people on stage, great speakers, really good information, uh, but it was more kind of inspirational and it was about bringing the community together. We couldn't really dig into like the technical, technical stuff. It'd be really, you guys were there. It'd be very difficult to, you know, teach Photoshop skills on the great big screen, even though the screen was big and the resolution and all that, it just wouldn't really work with a room that full of people. So one of the pros that I've taken away from essentially being forced to go virtual this year is for the ability for us to, uh, you, you know, utilize the fact that folks are going to be behind high resolution screens and have access to their own computer while they're going through it. So we're kind of we're kind of taking the opportunity this year to dig into more of the the technical side of things. There's definitely going to be some um, similar type conversations as last year, but we're really digging into how to actually light a space, how to shoot it, how to edit it, how to you know all those technical things that would have been a challenge in person. We're going to take advantage of this year to really dig deep on them. So the best way I can kind of explain this is you know we we didn't want to do just because last year the networking portion of the event the party the hanging out the getting to know each other that was a really big part of of las Wait, vegas there was Everybody a had there a was a party last year <laughs> i missed it 
No, that's a great. You missed it or you don't I'm, remember? I'm pretty, it. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure I have a lot of uh, evidence that you were definitely there, Rich. <laughs> Had but, the best uh, time of my life. Can continue, Brandon. <laughs> Sorry. It got choked up. It, it was, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a fantastic time. But again, we don't have the luxury of doing that this year. So we wanted to make an effort to to try and find a way to. If we did have to go virtual, we wanted to try to bring that networking approach into whatever it is that we did. So we've, we've been fortunate enough to, to partner and license with a software program that isn't just sort of a standard web that you're used to, maybe with like a Zoom call or, or something else that a lot of companies are going with these days. It's kind of, a, it literally is as close to a virtual conference or, or a conference as you can get online. So there's built-in networking opportunities, there's vendor involvement, there's virtual vendor booths, there's the ability to um, chat with each other in real time, there's the ability to create sort of FaceTime calls with other attendees. So we've tried our best to create an environment where people can really connect connect and, and come together and hang out again. But then over and above that, there are all of the sessions. And so yeah, that's the thing is you're going to you're going to plug into a session and it's going to be very similar to attending a webinar, but there will be some interactive stuff involved in terms of, you know, there's some gamification involved in the whole process. You've got the ability to network with the, the other attendees, ask questions. Some sessions will be 100 percent live in real time with a question and answer period at the end. Some will be sort of a, a pre-recorded session, but the presenter will be there available and as soon as the recording has run the presenter will be there to answer questions in real time and then some of it will be just strictly pre-recorded material touching on different areas of the industry that will be available to all the attendees um, or everybody that registers for the conference sorry i know that was a bit of a long-winded uh, response but that's kind of the overall approach that we're taking this year we're trying to make sure that we uh, make it as, as as much of a gathering of, of the community as we possibly can to replicate uh, Las Vegas. No, it's great because, you know, as you know, we do webinars through Zoom and the one thing that lacked, but we're okay with that because that's not the point here is, is obviously the networking from the attendees with each other. Um, so um, even though that's not what we're obviously going for in one of our webinars. So, you know, you having the ability for people to network with each other and these FaceTime calls, I think that's pretty neat. And, you know, those are the things you get when you're doing an in-person conference. So to be able to get this still virtually is, is a big plus. Yeah, I think so. I mean, again, it's not going to replace what it's like to meet face to face in a physical location, but at least there is the option to um, collaborate together and participate in the same sessions with each other and share notes and, and that kind of stuff. So again, nothing can replace what we experienced in person in Las Vegas, but we're doing our best. And, and the hope is, like I said, we're able to hopefully get back to Vegas in, in person next year and then um, in a dream scenario, we're able to actually incorporate this technology into the live event so that it becomes a bit more of a hybrid event so that we can open it up to more people and we can have a few more tools at our disposal to make sure that we're providing the industry with as much education and involvement uh, and interaction as possibly can. Awesome. Cool. So I'm sure everyone is, what everyone's been waiting for is, is to hear the lineup and who we got on the agenda or on the docket, if you want to call it that. So yeah. let's get into that because there are a ton of presenters, um, almost probably double what you had last year in Vegas. Is that correct? Something like that? I think we're almost at triple, to be honest. Almost at triple? Oh, wow. Okay. Pretty close. Uh, that's, that's, again, one of the – sorry sorry to, to cut you off, but that's kind of what, one of the additional pros of going virtual is we don't have one physical stage that we have to – Sure. really protect yeah. the time on that stage we have the ability to be flexible so we were able what we've lacked in the in-person networking we've been able to bolster uh, when it comes to the actual content and learning material that we're able to put out to people you got 23 speakers 20 yeah 24 20, actually 24 great yeah. yeah as of right now and again yeah. going virtual that does you know that can change we're not married to that number right now if 
if there's somebody out there that has an amazing idea that they'd love to present to the community, we, we do have the ability to kind of work with it. Whereas with Vegas, once it was set, it was set. We had no flexibility whatsoever. So again, there's a few, you know, there's the odd pro that comes along with going virtual and that's definitely one of them. Cool. So looking through this list, which um, for sake of full transparency, I just first saw about five minutes ago, there are a lot of names that people would recognize and a bunch of names that people probably wouldn't recognize. So yeah. that being said, I don't know if, if Brandon, it's best for you to kind of just go through the list and, you know, some people we know and they might not even need an introduction or tell, tell you know, might not need you to tell people what they do, but some people might. So if you want to go through the list and we can touch on quickly each of the people and go from there. Yeah, sure. I think what we'll do, if it's okay with you, since it is a pretty robust list, I'll mm -hmm. go through fairly quickly. I'll, I'll kind of announce sort of the, um, who the presenter is and a, just a real, ba maybe the title of their presentation, which would give a good indication of what they're going to cover. Sure. That'll give a fairly robust outline of what the all conference is going to be. And again, keeping in mind, this stuff is obviously subject to change. Some speakers may drop off. We may add new ones. Some people may tweak their presentations, but as of right now, this is kind of where we stand. So I'll go through and I'll, I'll do my best because, it, like I said, we've got quite a few. I don't want to get hung up on too many of them, but we'll just give you a quick overview. And if you guys have any questions along the way, don't hesitate to just pause me and, and I can elaborate if need be. Is that cool? Yep. All right. So, and this is in no particular order. This has nothing to do with schedule. This is just strictly... Uh, the presenters that are committed to the conference and a, a basic idea of what they're going to be covering. So one of the things we've got is a live image critique with Mike Kelly and Wayne Capilli. So they're going to chime in live. We're going to, we're going to find a way to get, um, I don't know how many images, but you know, a decent amount of images where Mike and Wayne are going to just critique them and kind okay. of explain no different than any other kind of critique that you see out there, things they like. It was kind of cool because, you know, you got Mike coming from a, a hand uh, architecture perspective, and then you've got Wayne who shoots a lot of luxury real estate, but he's been in the game so long. That's such an incredible eye. I figured the two of those guys, they know each other, they're buddies. They'll have a good rapport um, and they'll be able to really take unique perspectives when they share um, their thoughts on certain images. So that's one thing I think that uh, I know for sure I'm looking forward to. And, I think people, and pe really people are going to submit those images live or are going to be able to submit them beforehand? I think we'll have to probably do them beforehand just because in the interest of keeping things efficient, Smooth, right? We yeah. don't want to be fumbling around. We want to make sure we have them. So we'll find a way to reach out to the community and, and get some images ahead of time. And realistically, you know, we're trying to keep these presentations to about an hour, hour and 15 tops. So, mm -hmm. Um, probably six, eight images, maybe 10 at the, at the, at the, at the most, but I'll talk to Mike and Wayne about that and see what they're, what they're comfortable with. But again, I think that'll be a lot of fun and, and very educational. There's nothing cooler than seeing your own image critiqued by someone like a Mike Kelly and a Wayne. Sure. Exciting stuff. All right, moving on. So Tony Colangelo is back and he's going to, uh, do his, art and science of great composition presentation. Obviously he's not going to have time to do the whole thing, but he's got a bit of an abridged version and sort of updated for the PFRE conference. I know you guys had Tony on back in the day. You guys did a webinar with him it, to this day is going through the, the composition presentation with Tony back when I was started coaching with him four or five years ago. It's one of the most valuable things I've ever been through. So I'm really excited to be able to kind of leverage the platform and, and sort of get as many people uh, exposed to, to that great presentation as possible. And of all your speakers, this is the one I would be most interested in, in, in exactly where I'm at, but to, to be able to learn more about composition for me last year was the, this year and last year, it's probably the biggest improvement I've done in my, my photography for a long time. So this is the one exactly. I want to see. <clears throat> Oh, that's cool. That's good to hear because mm -hmm. uh, it's funny yeah. because we've had we've done workshops in the past and I've had 20 year photographer veterans come up and say, man, I've been doing this a long time and I've never, you know, a lot of these things I was doing instinctually, I didn't really know why. And then Tony helped me realize why I was doing what I was doing. And, and that kind of is a bit of a game changer for a lot of people. So I think um, regardless of whether you're brand new to the game or if you've been around for a few years, you're going to 
you're going to take a few things out of that presentation. There's no doubt about it. Cool. All righty. Now, moving on, we've got um, – this is a friend of you of you guys, Adam Taylor. He's going to be discussing it, it, the title of his pre, of his sessions: "Develop Your Licensing Mindset and Sell More Photos Too." So, again, without getting too in in depth here, um, Adam has you know he's 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 become amazing at licensing photos and generating additional revenue off the photos that he's taken, regardless of whether they're commercial value or if they're just strictly a a standard real estate shoot. He's just got a system in place. He understands the ins and outs of that side of things. You guys have talked to him. Your audience has heard about him. Um, he's just a perfect fit for this, especially in this in these times where, you know, there is a lot of infringement going on. Um, the nice thing about what he brings to the table is it's it's more of an offensive approach rather than a defensive approach. He's not challenging people. He's actually just saying, hey, I've got some good value, and as a company, you could benefit from using these images. So. Let's see if we can work out a deal. And I think there's a lot of people out there, if they could add 5, 10, 15% of additional revenue to their annual income, just based on leveraging the, the, the images that they have in their portfolio, they'd be super happy to do so. And I think this is the exact uh, type of session that's going to help get them pointed in the right direction. Sure. Yeah, I know his system is great. And, Make uh, some money from those images you're taking. Exactly. That's right. Cool. Right. Okay. Okay, we've got Andre McKenzie from HD Silverhouse HD in Toronto, who's going to, uh, he's, he's an amazing real estate videographer, shoots some of the highest end stuff in Toronto, does a lot of drone work. Uh, he's been in the business forever and he's just got a, he's really got a cool style. So I, I wanted to incorporate, because we were able to do some technical stuff this year, I really wanted to try and incorporate some video um, content and so Andre is going to touch on sort of uh, getting started in the real estate video helping people understand what kind of gear to pick and then just the basics of basically how to get the ball rolling if you are a lot of people in our industry are shooting just photos but they've got clients asking them to um, if they can do real estate video for them and some people are just a little bit uncomfortable with it so this is a good way for people to bridge that gap and start offering uh, real estate video Sure, and he's a he's a multi-time real estate videographer of the month, isn't he? He is. Yeah, I think yeah. he's won the videographer of the month contest three times, maybe wow. even four over the last few years. Wow, awesome! Yeah, I've seen his work. His work is some good stuff. Yeah, he does really nice work. Um, okay, so moving right along here, this was one that is a little bit different, um, and we threw this in this year because of the fact that it's 2020 and things have been a little bit crazy. I get a lot of requests and I know I get a lot of questions from people around North America about virtual staging. Mm -hmm. And there are two ways to approach this. It was to try and find, you know, an editing company that's really versed in virtual staging to help sort of introduce people to it, which I didn't think was very fair and just probably not the right approach. And so I reached out to, um, Chris Rainey from Arrange or Arrange, I'm not sure exactly how you say it, virtual staging, who I've worked with in the past and she does incredible work. And so I thought, you know, it'd be really cool to be able to give people an introduction to virtual staging, whether they want to do it themselves and offer it to their clients as a service or whether they want to outsource it to others or like to an outsourcing company, it would be nice for them to have a good idea of what you should be looking for when it's a good quality virtual staging. And that way, at the very least, they can sort of be discerning when they're choosing what companies they do and don't work with. So Chris is going to cover that topic. And I think that could be um, pretty cool. Yeah, no, it's very interesting and a very unique topic. And I'm looking at her work now and it's pretty damn good. So She's, she's not, some of the times you look at her work and you can't tell if it's a, if it's virtu virtually staged or if it's actually like a, an interior. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking model. at it a sort of low res cause I'm looking at it through Instagram, but yeah, there are, there are some images I can't tell. Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty amazing work. So that'll be, it's one of those ones. It's a little, you know, it's hit and miss. You're either going to be totally stoked to see that presentation or it's going to be completely irrelevant to you. But the part, part of, again, going virtual and being able to offer um, more 
content than we could on a live stage. We're trying to just venture into different areas here to give people a little taste of, of everything that can be beneficial in their business. Um, we've got the business of drones for real estate photography by Dan Milstein. So Dan was at mm. in Vegas last year. Uh, do you guys know Dan in person? Sure. I, hey, so. I flew a helicopter around New York City with Dan a couple of months yeah. ago for fun. Oh, no way. Um, spent a whole uh, afternoon twilight session with him. And uh, we went up and, and spent two hours in the helicopter shooting. He's, uh, he's quite a character. <laughs> we you can catch so our, our podcast. We've done a podcast with him. But uh, he's a great guy. He knows what he's talking about. Yeah, totally. He's he's awesome. He's so much fun to talk to. He's got a ton of personality and he really knows what he's doing. So when it came to covering, you know, actually last year, we knew that we were lacking. And of course, like I said, it, we were lacking in a lot of areas when it came to like specific aspects of the industry, but we knew we were limited to that room. So it was more about sort of inspiration and bringing the community together. Whereas this year, it's a lot more about focusing on the technical aspect of, of different is in the industry. And so we knew we had to cover some drone stuff and Dan was kind of the first guy that came to mind. So we've had lots of great conversations. He's going to cover off a whole bunch of different information when it comes to drones, you know, what kind of platforms you should be using. And I'm sure he's going to throw in a bunch of humor and some good advice when it comes to how to establish a drone business in your industry and also, or in your market, sorry. Um, yeah. So anyhow, that should be a, that should be a ton of fun. I wish, really I wish you guys can see Dan Milstein's basement control center place is crazy with machines everywhere and his whole computer <laughs> setup it's nuts it's like nasa nasa control center but nevertheless oh, so funny. i can actually picture it in my head yeah. <laughs> he's also a All he's right. a big weather guy he does uh, weather forecasting um and uh he's he's very active in a lot of things but very funny guy funny guy okay he's next what's going okay, on okay next we've got uh so this is the first i think that I've mentioned that has two sessions end up. We've got Gary Gomez. He'll be, uh, he'll, the first session that Gary's going to be doing is shooting and editing with Flash. So it's basically Gary's fast workflow for award-winning photos. A lot of people have gotten to know Gary over the years. He put out a great tutorial a couple years ago. It's helped a ton of people. He does a very fast, efficient workflow that creates sort of borderline interior design type photos, but it's applicable for real estate. And, and he's, He's become a good friend of mine. He's a super talented guy, incredibly smart, and a great teacher too. So I'm really looking forward to see. I think that's one of those sessions that, you know, bang for your buck, spend an hour and a half with Gary. Um, you're going to come away with some really good uh, lessons and be able to apply them basically as soon as you get out into the field. And then following that up, he's also going to do a session on some of the, what a lot of people would maybe consider drier, drier topics, but very important. He's going to cover budgeting and setting rates for profitability in your business and again he's one of those guys it's off you know oftentimes we talk about our industry and i know in my case a lot i mean for me personally i'm definitely a creative or i'm a business person i know our industry is a lot of creatives um and, and we we struggle sometimes with the business side of things the thing about gary that's really impressive to me is that he's not only super creative, but he's very business minded and analytical and he's super detail oriented. And I've seen the way he budgets and I've seen the way he approaches his business and it's fantastic. And I think people, again, for those of us who maybe struggle on the business side and, and really don't want to sit down and do a budget and all that nonsense, it is really important. And Gary's going to share some tools that will take a lot of that guesswork out and just allow you to, kind of sit down, plug your numbers in and it'll spit out some answers for you and you can focus more on being creative rather than worrying about the business side of things. So again, another one of those, maybe that might be one of the most underrated sessions of the, of the conference. Cause it's not the, you know, the super sexy stuff when it comes to photos, but I'm just really going to say that it ain't sexy, but it's, it's the money is sexy. So let's, let's <laughs> right. look at that. 
Yeah. Okay. Moving right, right along. We've cool. Got- Brandon, Brandon, I'm going to interrupt you for a second because oh, sure. I just have to give a message about HD Photo Hub before we move on. HD Photo Hub is a back office system designed just for real estate photographers. Give your clients a place to download their photos, make updates to their property websites, get flyers and social media tiles, and so much more, all on a platform that is branded to your company. Check them out today at hdphotohub.com. Again, that's hdphotohub.com. And with that, Brandon, sorry for interrupting you. Who's next? No worries. Like a pro. smooth. What's that? Uh, I said that was like the smoothest thing I've ever heard. Well, he's I, a, he's I read a read monster, that Brian. I, I <laughs> suck, but he's great. Well, yeah. We do read it every week. It's not. <laughs> it's not like. Well, what's my excuse? Uh, that I can't. <laughs> that, that, that I can't answer you. But it's I'm not a creative. Like I'm, not a, it's not, I'm not a reader. It's I'm not the first time God. seeing this. You know, I yeah. see this every week. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I would get an A in reading. Uh, All righty. Shall I continue? Yeah. You yes. shall. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Okay. So um, this is one that's really interesting to me. So SEO and digital marketing in 2021, practical steps to get noticed online long term. This is, you guys all know Gary from uh, ProEDU? Yeah, I actually took his ProEDU course, Jared's. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay, cool. So it's funny because I've gotten to know Gary over the last year or so. I went and saw him in uh, St. Louis, spent a weekend there. And um, I've always considered Gary kind of one of the best online marketers that I that I'm aware of. Um, I mean, I can be like, I've always joked, I could be checking the weather at one o'clock in the morning in Fort McMurray, Alberta. And all of a sudden I see a pro EDU ad, like he somehow just, he's just a good online marketer. And he sort of refers to Jared as basically the best online marketer that he knows. And so for that to come from a guy like Gary, I always took that as incredibly high praise. So over time, I've gotten to know Jared and he's helped me out with some SEO things, and and over and eventually, like you know, we were chatting the one day, and I kind of said, "Man, would you would you be interested in just doing a, a session on this kind of stuff? Because our industry needs us in the worst way. We're so busy out shooting and editing and trying to deliver photos, we got to be efficient with our online marketing. And it would be great if you could sort of step up and and share some of your knowledge. And so he he volunteered right away, and he was stoked to do it. And uh, like I said, I've gotten to know him over the last little while, and I'm no online marketing expert, but he has an amazing way of taking such a complicated and robust topic and simplifying it in a way. So maybe, you know, you might not know exactly how to go out and execute, you know, exactly, but at least you get a sense of, you understand it. And so I thought it would be a perfect chance for him to come on and, and, and sort of point people in the right direction uh, on how to sort of maximize the traffic that they're going to get and, and 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 maximize their SEO. So I'm I'm really looking forward to that session. Absolutely, and you know this is great because as you said, uh, you know going to the the conference in Vegas was was a lot of fun. I won't lie, but this is going to cover so many pertinent areas, and that's the key: being able to be pertinent with what we do, and we're in a small niche genre. A real estate photography or shooting spaces and this is going to be great so i'm really excited about this yeah, yeah, yeah and, and, that's, and i also i highly recommend his course too if someone wants to spend the money on the pro edu it's i don't know if you've seen it brandon but it's excellent course yeah i do have it i haven't been through the entire thing but i've been through a bunch of it and it's again the guy like i said he's he's just he's a he's an incredible instructor he's really personable very easy to learn from and i think um this might be another one of those sort of sleeper sessions because he's not necessarily well known in the real estate photography world, but in the, in the photography world in general. Uh, I mean, you, you mentioned his name to almost anybody out there on the speaker circuit or, or, you know, some of the main commercial photographers and he's, he's one of the top, top dogs. So I'm really excited to, uh, to see that session. And like I said, I've already learned a lot from him in the last little while and I, I'm excited for our industry to get some exposure to him and hopefully put some of his practices into place in their business. Cool. Okay. So we got Tony Colangelo is back for a second session and he, this is going to be a bit of a, 
re not a rerun for those who were attendants last year at the conference. Uh, Tony did a branding presentation and he's again, sort of going to be doing sort of branding 2.0. It's going to be similar, maybe update a little bit, but this is one of those things where I, you know, I keep going back to it. When I learned composition from Tony, I went through the, the process with him. That was a huge turning point in my career. And then when I went through the branding with him, it was another turning point because it really helped me stop and focus and just try to try to figure out what I wanted my clients. How do I put it? I wanted, I kind of, it was similar to the composition. I knew what I wanted to put out in terms of marketing and how I wanted to be perceived in the market, but I didn't really have a roadmap as to how to accomplish that. And Tony really helped to distill that down to a few simple steps to really help me figure out, you know, who I was, who I wanted to be perceived as in the market. And that sort of created that North star for me moving forward. So every decision that I made from that point forward, um, was was based on some of the things I learned from him. So again, another one of those things that's going to be super beneficial for um, whether you're new to the industry or you've been in it for a while, it's, it's going to be a great uh, session to be a part of. Awesome. And Brandon, we're just going to have to speed things up a little because we're running low on time. So we obviously we're yeah. going to get to everybody, but a lot um, of stuff going on. Yeah. We just got to, we're going to move a little quicker through them. All right. Sounds good. Okay. So evolution of real estate video. Everybody knows Jordan and Nick. They're going to be touching on uh, sort of the past, present, and future of real estate video and covering some of the practical things that you guys can do today to improve your videos with the equipment that you currently have. Cool. We've got Matthew Stallone needs no introduction. He's going to cover Instagram or um, social media in general. I'm sure he'll have a a bit of a focus on Instagram because that's sort of his wheelhouse. But again, yep. we wanted to, to introduce some marketing into this year's conference. Yeah, no, he's the, he's the um, guy to do it in our industry. Yeah, for sure. sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, we've got, uh, sorry, copyright registration and how to defend your rights. So I won't go into a bunch of detail. Bottom line is Mike Boatman is going to sort of, share his entire workflow when it comes to how to actually go through the copyright registration process. It's not going to be a bunch of theory. It's going to be like, do this, do this, do this, do this, and you can register your images. Very practical stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I, Joel, can't I can't stress the importance of doing that for people. It's, it's so crucial to, to register your images and, and even sign up with a company for the monitors for infringement. You know, I'm in, I'm in the middle of a litigation right now for, you know, an infringer that I've never even heard of. And, um, you know, we talked about with Adam Taylor licensing, it, it can almost be like a, almost a source of revenue for all these people that infringe. I know, I know a couple of people, I think Carrie Burns looks at this as a source of income um, yeah. for copyright infringers. So um, yeah, you know, register those images. It's definitely an important thing and you don't want to go out there trying to like necessarily chase infringements, but you certainly want to protect your work. And these guys are going to help you figure out a good way to do that. I know, I mean, just have one conversation with a Mike, a guy like Mike, and, and you see how much money is left on the table if you don't capitalize when you're being infringed upon. And that's mm -hmm. a whole different topic for another day, yeah. but it's important. It's really, really important. And Mike's got an incredible presentation for that. No, and then great. to complement Mike's presentation, Joel Rothman, who's probably one of the top IP lawyers in the U.S., uh, he's going to sort of be complimented. They're going to collaborate together so that, you know, Mike's not a lawyer. He just knows the process. Joel's going to help step in if and when need be to kind of provide that actual legal uh, advice to make sure that everybody's getting the proper information. Uh, we've got Nathan Cool, who's going to talk about um, sort of the the new normals in the virtual world, you know, it's definitely changed our industry the way that uh, COVID has sort of had an impact on everybody. And Nathan's going to touch on a lot of the different changes that have come because of COVID and, and this new virtual world that we live in. And he's going to go into some detail on what to expect and, and how to sort of adapt and make sure that we're basically prepared for the future. Uh, Rachel Branke's back, the law talk. Um, 
honestly, I have no idea what she's going to talk about. She's, I mean, <laughs> you guys know Rachel. She's going to come in and she's going to just do her thing and she's going to help people make sure that they're, for, you know, to, to the best of my knowledge, she's going to talk about how to protect your images, but also your business, right? Making sure that you're not building mm-hmm. a house of cards, making sure that you're protected from a legal, legal perspective and you're not uh, going out there and setting up business only to be sort of a, a sitting duck for somebody who's looking to take advantage of you. And as you guys saw her last year, you've had her on the podcast. She could have stayed on that stage for three hours and I don't think anybody would have complained. So we're looking forward to having her back. Exactly. I don't think she needs a topic. She can just go on and uh, she'll be good to go. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Now we've got, uh, we're almost at the end here. We've got, um, do you guys know Natalia Robert from San Diego? I do not. No. So she's an interior photographer. She's uh, the founder of the Grove Studio. And she's just, we just kind of met a few weeks ago and, and started chatting. And she, she just is, she blew my mind. I was so intrigued by her and her approach to the whole industry. So she's actually going to be doing a couple sessions for us. One of them is going to be the good, bad, and the ugly, being a female architectural photographer in t- today's world. And so that's going to be a really interesting session. Uh, like I said, I've talked to her over the phone a few times. We've had some pretty long conversations and, uh, I can't get enough of her. She's such a wise person and she's going to inspire a lot of people. Yeah, Beautiful at, work on her yeah, website. I'm looking at it also right now. It's just big, uh, really nice. Yeah, she's fantastic. She's been showcased on, um, on Mike's AP Almanac, I think mm-hmm. a couple times. Um, but yeah, just a great, you know, I don't know her well, but every conversation I've had, it's just been fantastic. So I love her tagline. Welcome. Let's make you the best damn interior photographer in the world. <laughs> <laughs> that is classic. Um, okay. We're coming into two. We've got another double header here. We've got this guy. What's his Rich uh, Adam Baum. Adam Baum. You guys might know this guy. He's got two sessions he's going to be covering. Uh-huh. Top-notch 360 photography in less time and quick and easy flambient with Rich Baum. So, Rich, I don't know if you want to touch uh-huh. on, on what you're going to cover. It's pretty self-explanatory, but... Well, you know, um, my goal is to really uh, focus for the newer photographers. I mean, the goal I wanted last year and even next year and this year is to get more people that are coming into the business. And a lot of those people aren't looking to get, you know, be, be um, high-end design photographers or, or sell photos. They just want to be real estate photographers. So my goal is how to be quick and efficient and make your day. And it's just what I do on my YouTube channel. But it's how to make your day and how to be fast and efficient while still keeping quality and, and delivering a great product. And, uh, you know, it, it really is tolerable. You can make this work. But at the beginning, you're, you're so overwhelmed with technical stuff and, and uh, artistic stuff and everything. It's really hard. But I'm hopefully going to do it. And it's going to be, you know, you can see everything on my YouTube channel. But certainly going to be able to go through a lot of things in a little bit more in depth and you're going to have a chance to talk in, or to uh, ask questions and, and we're going to have a live moderator. And uh, that's just going to be me showing you how to hopefully a uh, few little tips and tricks and how to uh, get faster and better and, and just deliver a great product with less pain. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, and my next, uh, the- uh, uh, do oh, the other sorry. one too. No, yeah, no, no. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. If you, you- Okay. Well, uh, I'm doing the uh, top-notch 360s. Um, I started doing 360 just before uh, PFRE in Vegas last year, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot of stuff that I really went through a lot of time figuring out how to, what is 360, how to make the camera work, this and that. And I'm just going to show you a few things. It's kind of like my coaching session, my private coaching session, but I'm going to do it for everybody at the conference. And it's going to show you how I do what I do. And I do it quick and easy. And it it really is a workflow that works for me. So it's going to be the um, 360 and flambient and general real estate photography. So those are the two areas that I'm going to be dealing with. Perfect. Okay, I'll, uh, how are we doing for time there? Uh, right. we're good. Let's just keep, moving, keep on moving. We only have, what, five left, six left? So. Yeah, okay. So we've got lighting spaces and compositing images. This is uh, Scott Basil out of San Diego. He was there at the conference last year. Uh, he does amazing interior work, and so mm. it just made sense to – I wanted to have him on the stage this year in Vegas if it was possible. Didn't seem to pan out, but uh, he's definitely going to – 
come to the table here with a presentation and help people how to shoot luxury real estate and composite it and, and all that kind of stuff. Cool stuff. Um, okay, where are we here? Linking your way to high profile, high profit clients. So Suzanne Feinberg from Sandy or from sorry, uh, Phoenix, she's made uh, quite an impact getting clients from LinkedIn. And so mm. she's going to do just that. She's going to share uh, some strategies involved in, in growing your business and making connections on LinkedIn. Cool. You know, speaking of it, I, I had this like inkling to just get back into LinkedIn like in the last month and a half, six weeks while I've been on the road. So I like redid my whole LinkedIn profile and I'm starting to really learn LinkedIn now and see the benefits of networking with it. So that should be pretty interesting. Yeah, it's funny. I haven't been on, you know, admittedly, I haven't been on LinkedIn in a long time. And I, I had to re-download the app on my phone. That, that's how long it's been. And I, I, I read on it and I spent some time. I bought actually a LinkedIn course on how to properly use LinkedIn. And I've been watching it and I redid my profile and I'm, I'm starting to network. So there, there's definitely value there. Yeah, there's no doubt it's powerful. It just takes some time and some effort. And that's why leveraging someone like Suzanne who kind of dedicates herself to it and knows it and she can come and share sort of the top level best practices as opposed to us trying to go out and learn it from the ground up, that should be beneficial. Uh, we've got building and scaling your photography business. So Vince, you guys knew him from last year. Mm -hmm. um, such a cool guy, such a character, very intelligent, built a business, grew it, sold it. Uh, he knows this industry really well and he's going to help people learn how to uh, build and scale their business and, and also build their team for those out there that are looking to actually turn, go from like maybe a one or two person show to an actual team. He's going to touch on, on that and, and help point people in the right direction on, on what's, you know, what's necessary to build your team in this business. And he's got like 1500 employee or photographers around the country. So he knows what he's talking about and he's, he he's, and he's fun. I like him. Yeah, he's going to keep fun. you entertained. Keep you entertained. Yeah, he's a great guy. Um, Dee Zunker is going to, her topic is called the color of light. So she's going to basically focus strictly on basically color. So it's not just about, uh, you know, adjusting it in post. She's going to help people understand how to approach it in camera so that you can minimize the amount of effort that you have to, to, to put in out of camera in post processing to, to get good white balance or just color balance in general. Cool. Yeah. Uh, um, Dee, Dee's wrote, written some articles for us back when we used to release articles consistently and uh, she knows her stuff. She's very scientific, yeah. very tech, techy, and she, she really knows what she's doing. So. Yeah, totally. We're super excited to have her on board this year. Um, marketing to interior designers, soft skills, authenticity, and playing the long game. This is the second presentation from Natalia Robert. Again, can't say enough about her. We've had some amazing conversations. Uh, I think any opportunity you get to spend some time with her and learn is going to be beneficial to, to anybody in attendance. Um, okay, moving on. Fraser Almeida from Vegas is going to cover twilight photography. I mean, it's become such a big thing in our industry. Everybody does twilight photography. A lot of real estate or a lot of agents and sellers want it to set their, their homes apart. And I've seen some great work from Fraser over the years. And, um, He's a super cool guy. We've had a few conversations and I think he'll do a great job sort of letting people into his process, um, touching on twilight photography. We're photographing luxury spaces with minimal equipment. This is Wayne Capilli. So Wayne's doing two sessions. He's doing that one photo critique with Mike. And then he's also going to help people basically learn how to go into a high-end property or any property for that matter and shoot it with minimal equipment. People that follow Wayne on social media know that, you know, you don't need to come in with 14 Pelican cases of gear to do a good job. Wayne's the master at, at you know, utilizing the minimal amount of equipment to get the best results. So he's going to touch on that. He's also going to discuss some camera settings for real estate photography, and then he's going to do some real time edits um, right during the presentation. Cool. Yeah. Wayne knows what he's doing. And then everyone knows that. So, yeah, for sure. And Wayne was a presenter on stage last year, so it was cool to have him uh, part of the Vegas conference and then now part of the virtual. And then a couple little things. Um, 
there's going to be, this won't be part of the live event. This will be something that will be available in sort of the, um, the content library, but there's a, a pretty robust real estate photography census that will be available to people. There will be a video going through um, sort of the detail, the information, how it was c collected, what it all means, uh, just some really valuable information for the industry, and that's going to be something that becomes an annual thing moving forward. And then we're also looking to do speaker panel like we did last year. That was one of the hits of the conference was getting all the speakers on stage to kind of just casually field questions and poke fun at each other and just have a nice little wind down to the event. So we're looking to do that again. Can't commit uh, exactly who's going to be a part of it this year. It's going to depend on schedules and all that kind of stuff. But we've got enough presenters that we're definitely going to have a robust panel uh, at the end of day two. And then, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We are going to add the recording from the 2019 speaker panel the video version of it uh into the content library as well for anyone who missed the conference last year and just wants to see what that oh, was nice. all about you guys um released it on on Audio, the yeah. podcast and it was really fun to listen to driving around and going in and out of shoots but we'll probably post the, the try to guess who was talking because there was no video at that point <laughs> <laughs> yeah didn't take too long though. Maybe it was, yeah. uh, it was a little bit different because I was there, but it didn't take long to figure out who was who. Yeah. And uh, I think you guys did a fantastic, you guys, by the way, too, I should say, you guys did just an amazing job last year with all the, the pre-interviews with the Facebook lives and then the, the live stuff that you did at the conference and everything following up. You guys did a, an amazing job and I want to make sure that you know how much we appreciate that. Yeah. Well, we'll do what we can again for you this year and try to, uh, try to get people to come and, and register. We know how important it is, um, not only for you, but just for all the photographers out there to learn and educate themselves. Yeah, you know, for sure. That, well, we're, we, we want to help and we're definitely taking some chances. It's a different approach than last year, but it's not without its risks. And so we'll appreciate everybody's support and we'll do everything that we can to deliver as much value as we possibly can. Well, I remember you said that last year at before Vegas, uh, you know, this comes with its risks, but I think it turned out all right and we all had a blast and we all learned a ton. So if this year is anything like last year's, you know, I know we're all in for a treat. Yeah, we're confident. We feel good. And uh, again, appreciate your guys' support and, and um, I'm really looking forward to, to seeing this all play out. Absolutely. I can't right, cool. wait. I'm excited. So that lineup is insane that we just went through. Now, where can people go online to find out or, or view the lineup and register and all this stuff? Is there a website? Is it directly through the PFRE site? What's the best way for people to find this stuff? Well, since we haven't launched registration yet, we don't link to share. But what I was hoping that we could do is... Oh, this well, when this releases, it probably will be launched, most probably. So we'll put, I guess, a link at that point in the show notes. So if people are listening. Okay. In that case, the, the easiest way based on that would be to go to photographyforrealestate.net. Mm -hmm. um, but then, like I said, you know, because this is a virtual thing and it's a little bit different, we're really going to be relying on a lot of word of mouth. So we're going to be creating some incentives for people to share. Um, but at the end of the day, photographyforrealestate.net, the links will be live there for sure. And, and we'll definitely go out of our way to try and, uh, get those links published anywhere we possibly can. Awesome. And uh, like we did last year, Brandon, um, we'll try to do some Facebook lives with some of the panelists if we can, if you can uh, help us facilitate that and we'll do our best to get that. Um, you know, I'm going to be on the road and have a lot of lonely nights in the hotel room. So <laughs> if I can have some conversations with people then by all means. So yeah, well you let me know who you'd like to talk to and I will do everything in my power to, to make introductions. Obviously I can't speak, or commit on their behalf, but I'll certainly try to make the introductions if I can. And please, everybody out there, feel free to send us a message at Studing Spaces if there is somebody that you would like to have interviewed. Maybe we'll we'll take a poll and see who wants to come on first and, and take care of that. Yeah, and to add to that, Rich, if if there's you know we just went through a pretty robust list, but if there's a topic or a speaker that's out mm -hmm. there that somebody thinks should be a part of this thing, by all means, don't hesitate to reach out and let us know as well. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, good cool. stuff. So this is going to be pretty exciting. So you said um, tentatively, but most probably um, November twentieth and twenty first. Was that right? That's right. That'll be the that'll be the event. And then, um, like I said, a portion of the content will be live. A portion of the content will be in a sort of a li a, a, a library format, kind of like a Netflix streaming type thing. Um, and then registration, we're we're shooting for. 
around the 20th, 21st of September. That's a little bit tentative because there are some variables out there, but that's kind of our goal. We want to give people about two months notice if we possibly can. Cool. So two final questions for you that I have. Um, Mm -hmm. Number one, how long will the stuff stay live to rewatch it if you register? Again, a little bit of an unknown, but most likely about 30 days. Okay. So enough to give people the time to catch up over the holidays and that kind of thing, but not so much that, um, I mean, that's a lot of volume to be, to be hosting and managing and that kind of stuff. So we'll, we'll see how that plays out, but that's kind of where my head's at right now is about, about 30 days probably. Okay. And, uh, one final two part question and, you know, as we just mentioned, we are recording this a couple of weeks before your registration launch. So if you don't have the answer yet to this, by all means, just let me know. Um, what are we looking at cost wise for people? And secondly, is the cost or the fee an all in, or do people have an option of just purchasing specific presentations if they have, let's say, one or two that they're really interested in and some that they're not? Can they go out and and purchase individuals or is it an all-in thing? Yeah, that's a great question. We are, we went down that road a million times um, and we've decided it's going to be an all-in simply because it's just from a software perspective, it's just overly complicated. and, And we think that we're keeping the actual price point low enough that it's kind of take, take it all or leave it sort of thing. Um, I'm a little hesitant to share the price point because we're working on some different things. Um, This whole world of virtual events has introduced a lot of challenges when it comes to pricing. Um, But I can say it's going to be a fraction of last year's conference in person. We're trying our best to keep this as absolutely affordable as possible. We want to reach as many people as we can. And and the approach that we're taking is really for, we we really want to try to find a way to make it available to anybody who should, who wants to and should be able to access this this information. That being said, obviously (laughs) there's a lot of people would be surprised to hear, but the, the, the virtual conference is, it's very expensive. It's, it's very much in line with the in-person event. So we got to be a little bit careful, but um, we're trying our best to make it as affordable as we possibly can. So we'll be launching official prices in the next few weeks. Um, we'll go from there. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Great. Yeah. So listen, I want to do my final read of the, it's just for iGUIDE. iGUIDE is a turnkey solution for those looking to expand their real estate photography business beyond photography to add 3D tours, laser accurate room measurements, square footage calculations, and professionally drafted floor plans. Get your first five eye guides free by adding code shooting spaces in the referral section and purchase. Visit goeyeguide.com to learn more. Check out iGuide. Where's your confidence? That read was fantastic, Rich. Fantastic. <laughs> God, I should I should be a voiceover. You need now, to believe anyway, in yourself. Rich. Listen, uh, Brandon, we I, I know that everybody that was there last year understands the undertaking and appreciates the effort because we know how much work it is. A lot of people don't know how much work the virtual tour is. But I can attest to it's more work in some ways, much more money in some ways. But I want to say everybody that was there last year had so much fun. And we'll really, what we gained last year, I think we'll gain more this year because there's more content. I think this is really good. I want to see more new photographers to the real estate business. I want to see the people coming up. This is where you need to spend your money. You need to not, you know, we want new equipment, but you've got to get the education. You've got to learn this. And he's got all of these topics are things that we can go out on Monday after the two day uh, virtual conference and go use these, use these techniques, use these, this information and become much better and have a better, a better business. So I just want to say, please check it out and join it because it's going to not only be fun, but it's going to be super educational and pertinent to your money. It's return on investment right there. 
Cool. Very well said, Rich. And for those listeners, um, this episode um, is most likely going to be our last episode for a couple of weeks as we go on break for the fall, just like we did last year. I think last year we came back right around the time of the conference also. So it'll probably be something a little similar, probably right after the conference. Although we are going to try to do some Facebook lives over the next couple of weeks um, with some of the presenters um, for the conference. So um for those who've been listening for the last 12 weeks while we went live, if this is in fact our last episode, we want to thank you as always for listening and subscribing and sending in your ask the questions and all the emails and the positive feedback we receive. It's uh, we, we love to hear it and it's all for you. Yeah. Great. Okay. And, and, you know, again, uh, that shooting spaces podcast.com, Com. You can ask the guys questions and uh, we can bring on, you know, maybe we'll bring on some of the speakers and we'll have some good stuff coming up in the fall and uh, make the most of your of your time and and be healthy and, and try and deal with the smoke and the COVID and, and oh my God, and then the election coming up. I can't even take it. Oh my God. I'm going to need to go to Vegas. Oh, wait, I can't go to Vegas <laughs> this year. Okay. But anyway, I just want to say thank you all for joining us and be on behalf of Brandon Cooper Brian Berkowitz, and Rich Baum, go shoot some spaces. This has been Shooting Spaces. For more episodes, visit shootingspacespodcast.com and visit our education site at shootingspaces.net.